Hello and welcome to Center Code's Team Edition Training. I'm Stefan and I'll be your guide through learning how to use Center Code. Everything from setting up your communities to building out your projects and then finally collecting and delivering impactful feedback to your stakeholders. But before we can get to all that, let's start with the basics, the foundation of Center Code. So in this video, we'll get started. We'll define communities and projects. We'll learn how to navigate using the menu bar. We'll configure our visual themes. We'll write some public copy. And then finally, we'll invite other team members to join us. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's start with the basics. Fundamentally, Center Code consists of two spaces. We have our community, and then we have our projects. Now, communities are for initial user recruitment and collecting user data. So this is where we bring in all of our potential testers, our support team members, our admins, and we're collecting data. So we're learning what kind of devices uh, our users use, um, their demographics as well, where they live, what kind of tester they are, et cetera. And this forms the foundation for our projects, which are our dedicated testing environments. And that's where we validate and test the features of our individual products. So for example, we could have a project centered around a brand new smart home security system. And we're testing all of the features of that system within that project. So we might be testing how the cameras work, how the geofencing works, how it connects to the app, et cetera. And that's where we can triage the feedback, we can bring it in, and we can deliver it to our stakeholders in its most impactful state. Now, right now we're at the community home and you can see right in the middle, we have a project, Quest 3 Pro. As we go through the course, we'll create projects and build them out and learn how to triage the feedback within that project. There's cool things that you can do at each level of center code. So for example, at the community level, we could run a community survey that um, asks our users general questions about the devices they use and their attitudes and their sentiments, et cetera. And then within a project, we can schedule out an entire test, um, have these focused phases where we get the maximum amount of coverage on the product and manage our testers fatigue so that they really deliver the right amount of feedback across the entire test period. Now that we know a little bit more about that, let's hop in and learn how to navigate center code. All right, so let's talk about UI and navigation. Now, all of your navigation options are at the very top of the implementation in what we call the menu bar. And this contains all kinds of different menu options that allow you to access pretty much any part of center code in just a couple clicks. Now I'm here at the community home. So let's go ahead and check out the community side of things first. At the top left hand, we have our community logo for Sirius Cybernetics. And if I click on this, this produces a little drop down menu. And here we have all of our different community options. So going directly to the community homepage, accessing community management, content types, et cetera. And if I hover over one of these menu items with a carrot on it, it'll actually expand another menu off to the side. So here we can access our different programs and projects. We can take a look at our users. We can configure recruiting, create content, et cetera. Now, if I hover over specific options here, something like users, you can see that we have a little button next to that that pertains to whatever menu object we're looking at. So for users, we have an option to directly invite users to the community if we want to. For content, we can create a brand new content type, all that. So very, very easy to access different tools and different areas of the site right away. Right next to that, we have the option to enter the last project that we were currently in, which was Quest 3 Pro. So if I click on this, you can see that we go directly to the project and it's gonna give us a couple more menu items. We have options for management here. So I can click on this and see all of my project management options. I can take a look at activities. I can go ahead and take a look at all of the different feedback that we have within the system. So these options are going to change depending on which uh, area of the site you're on. So you're gonna have more options if you're in a project and some options may change. Now, if I click on Quest 3 Pro here, um, you can see we have our project home. We also have uh, downloads, et cetera. And if I had more than one project live, I could actually swap between projects very easily. So I could click on this and go to a menu option that says, you know, oh, go to this other project. And that allows me to go between projects without having to constantly return to the community home, which is great. Speaking of returning to the community home, we'll go back there right now. So we'll go to community home. We'll focus on the right side of the screen now. So we have a button that allows us to quickly invite users to our community. This also exists at the project level. 
Um, it's just going to invite users to the project rather than the community. And right next to that, we have our uh, help menu. So this is where you can access our latest update notes via what's new. Um, we've got documentation for getting started. You can join our Delta community. We have testing resources right there. You can contact support. And we also have all of our social media options there. So Discord, Spotify, LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, definitely recommend that you check out the Delta Huddle podcast. That is a shameless plug right there because I do host that podcast. Um, but we have all sorts of fantastic insights from industry experts there, stories about how they got their start in testing, et cetera. Definitely go ahead and check it out. Next to that, we have our notifications. So if I click on this, um, it's going to show me all of the items that I'm following um, and all the projects that I'm in. Um, so I can use this to quickly see, hey, did a feedback item change? Did someone comment on something, et cetera? So this is a great way to keep tabs on what's going on in your project. Right next to that, we have a search bar. Um, you can search for pretty much anything within Center Code using this search bar. So everything from users to survey results, content, et cetera. Uh, this also will change a little bit if you're in a project. And then right next to that, we have our profile options. So I can see the test platforms that I've filled out, account settings, profile. I can log out. Um, if I'm a community member, I can opt out of the community if I'd like to, et cetera. So navigation within Center Code, very straightforward, very easy. Always go to the menu bar if you are stuck or if you're unsure of where to go. Um, you're going to find that option to get to where you need to go right there. Now that we know more about that, um, let's go ahead and learn how we configured uh, this snazzy visual theme that we have within our site. All right, so visually theming your website is a lot more than just putting a fresh coat of paint onto uh, your center code implementation. Um, it gets your users excited about testing and also associates your testing program with your organization. So it says that we're the real deal and lends that level of authenticity to everything that you do. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we'll go to our community menu here. We'll go down to community configuration and then we will select visual themes. Now I have a serious cybernetics theme built out for us, but you can see that you can have more than one theme inside of your community if you'd like. Um, but let's go ahead and check out how this current theme was built. So we'll click on New Serious Cybernetics. Uh, we have our name right there, New Serious Cybernetics. Uh, we also have a logo. Um, so this logo is going to display at the top left. Um, I'm using an SVG file here. We recommend using SVGs for a lot of the images across your site. And then down below, we have the colors for our menu bar. So you see I have kind of a really nice dark gray blue and then a kind of bright pink to go along with our accent. And our accent is going to be that carrot right there. Um, if I click on background here, um, you can see I can adjust the colors of any of these elements just by entering in a hex code, or I can use the color wheel to select a color. Uh, this is great if you already have a pre-selected um, set of colors from your marketing team. Maybe you've already figured out all those hex codes ahead of time for what your primary color should be, secondary color, etc. So you can just drop them right in here and they'll automatically populate, which is great. Down below that, we have things like text links and accents and secondary accents, etc. Um, and if we scroll down here, we can actually choose a page background. So you can see kind of in the left and right hand margins of the screen, we have this nice flowing gray image, um, bended curve, um, it's PNG. Um, and you can just drag and drop images into these boxes in order to uh, populate them. Now, let's say you don't have a background image um, or you're short on time, you know, you want to get to testing and recruiting. So this is, you know, maybe not the most important thing on your list. We do have a list of preloaded um, backgrounds here. So everything from, you know, uh, constellations to radial mazes, light cycles, etc. You can really, really make center code look like your own. Um, and that's all right there for you. Just select which one works for you or upload your own. Now below that, we also have the ability to configure exactly how text is going to look against your background. So you can see that this uh, background tint is a little too dark. It doesn't really show up against our background. If I click on this and adjust it, adjusting that background turns it kind of a, a bright white. And um, we still have our background image. And now the text looks a lot better. Um, we can do the same thing with the text as well. So if I wanted to make the text um, you know, a brighter color or a different color, 
just drag this around and it'll go ahead and adjust that. And we can see how this is going to look in real time. Same thing with our text links. I could update this to a really bright red if I wanted to for that contrast. Um, so this allows you to see exactly what it's going to look like within the site. That way, you know, text pops properly. It's all visible. Um, there's no weird, you know, contrast or things that you can't see when you're using center code. Likewise, we also have our uh, outer backgrounds. So when you're logging into center code, um, you have your login screen or your landing pages. Um, and those can also support images and different text, etc. Like before, you can upload your own. We also have a selection of different um, uh, options here. Um, and some of these are actually uh, animated. So we have ghost hunting right there, which is kind of cool. Uh, breezy blinds, uh, ambient fireflies, etc. And you can toggle exactly how that's going to look right there in the box below. And of course, add in your hex codes and configure your colors how you want. And you're good to go. We also have a set of uh, custom hex codes below. So this is going to uh, populate some custom colors that you can use in things like our WYSIWYG editor. We also have a report logo. Uh, you can upload a favicon uh, for your site. So that's the little icon that appears next to your bookmarks. And then if you use any kind of custom CSS code um, for your website, um, we also support that as well. Um, you can remove shadows from elements and buttons. So if you want a flatter look, for your uh, center code implementation, that's totally possible. And then you can also use color gradients within your theme if you want more of a blended uh, kind of feel to the website. Now that we understand how that works, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually uh, set visual themes for our community. All right, so if this is the first visual theme that you've created, uh, your site's gonna automatically default to that theme. Um, but if you have multiple themes and you'd like to switch between the two, maybe you have an older kind of company image that has since been revamped and you're going to move on to the next generation, so to speak. It's very easy to do. Uh, we'll go to Sirius Cybernetics or your community logo. We'll go to community configuration, go to basic settings, and then you can change your visual theme right here at the bottom. So you can swap between those visual themes if you need to, click submit, and it'll populate across your site. All right, so as we're crafting our community, we're getting the foundation of our program set up. It's important to put in place things like privacy policies and terms of use and frequently asked questions so that our users know exactly what we're doing here, the things we may collect, what we expect of them, etc. We can do all of that through public copy. So what I'll do is I'll go to our community logo right here. We'll go to community configuration and then we'll select public copy. And you can see that I've got four different fields that I can fill out here, privacy policy, terms of service, frequently asked questions, an overview of the program itself, et cetera. And by clicking into any of these, I can go ahead and configure them. So let's go ahead and take a look at our privacy policy. Um, it's gonna show the local URL, and we have two modes here. You can either copy and paste in some custom copy that you already have. So, you know, we have a uh, go early program here at Center Code, and this is our uh, privacy policy for that. So we just added that in or you also have the option to redirect to our URL. So if you already have a pre-existing page for a privacy policy or a frequently asked questions that covers the scope of your program, just add it right in here and click Submit. Uh, and then you'll have your privacy policy, terms of service, frequently asked questions populated. Users can access those and understand exactly what's going on inside of your community and your projects. All right, last thing before we close out this video is inviting some of our internal team members to join us within CenterCode. So this is very straightforward. We're gonna to go to the top right and we're gonna select Invite to Community. It's gonna bring up this box right here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste the email addresses of the people that I'd like to invite. So I got all my email addresses right there. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on via Teams and then I'm going to select Project Creator and I'll select support team. Uh, these are all the members of my support team. Um, if they were project administrators, I could also add them to that team as well. I could add them to observers, et cetera. Um, but these are all the people who are going to be added into this team. Uh, down at the bottom, I can uh, preview what this invitation is going to look like, and I can click on right here to actually customize what this is going to look like. So I could say, hi, if I want to. Um, I can go back to the default as well. And then once our users uh, get this email, they can just click on the button here to log in or create their account to join us. Um, here's the notice chain that they'll run into. We'll talk about notices 
little later on in the course. Just think of it as all the content they need to complete before they hit the community or the project home. And then I just click send invite. It's going to prepare those invitations. It'll send them out. And there you go. We've invited our other users to join our community. Now, you may have noticed that we have a bunch of different teams and uh, user types that are available to us. And that is actually the topic of the next video. So I hope to see you there and stay tuned.